Hello, this is Pastor Jeff. We want to thank you for joining us for this online worship experience. I hope you're blessed by this word today. And if you want to know more about Hope Church, you can visit us at this website below me, realchurchforrealpeople.com. How I long to breathe the air of heaven where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity there will be a day when no will bow before him there will be a day when death will be no more standing face to face with he who died in
Church, just imagine. On that day, come on. We'll join the resurrection. Yeah. On that day, we'll join the resurrection. We stand beside the heroes of the faith. And with one voice, a thousand generations. Here's what they'll say. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. I can't wait for that day. Come on. And on that day, we join the resurrection. just a little bit deeper in our worship. Let's keep worshiping him. If you just lift your hands. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Because your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name it stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries holy you are lifted high oh, holy 
And we cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Amen. How many loves worshiping the Lord? How many loves giving all you got to Him? I'd rather be. We live in a world where there's a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of challenges, but it's comforting to know that we serve a God who has a perfect plan for each of our lives today. And sometimes it's easy to get consumed with all the issues of life. Sometimes your mind just gets wrapped around of what you're facing and what you're going, going on in your life right now. And sometimes we've all been there. We wonder, is there a light at the end of the tunnel or is that a train coming to take me out? And sometimes we ask those questions. But what I want us to do today is understand that if we could see and just get a little perspective of what God sees, see, God is able to zoom out and see the big picture. And some of us, we become so consumed and sometimes the best thing to do is just stop, take a deep breath and realize that God has a much bigger plan and a much bigger purpose for what you are going through. Matter of fact, the scripture says his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. God sees the big picture. Just as a skilled architect will carefully plan out every detail of a building, God has planned out and designed the steps of your life. And if you will walk in his ways, your steps are already ordered. Look at what Psalm 139 and 14, if you could put it on the screen, I want to show you this verse. It says, I will praise you for I am. Everybody put your hand on your heart. Say, I am. He begins to describe. He says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So you're not a mistake. You're not an accident. You were appointed by God to be here at this point of time in all of history because you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. Isn't God doing great things? Amen. Amen. It says, marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. How many is glad God's holding us in the palm of his hand? Every aspect of our being, whether it be our talent or whatever we're passionate about, understand that God has gifted you and you have a uniqueness and God is continually to work on you. You know, it's like this. When some people just see a rock, God sees a masterpiece. I love what Michelangelo said, a famous sculptor and painter. He says, every block of stone has a statue inside of it. It's the task of the sculpture to discover it. And let me just tell you this. You may feel like you're just a piece of stone, but let me tell you, God continually is chipping away. God is continually to mold you. God is continually to work on you. And some of the things that God wants to chip away today, maybe it's fear, maybe it's insecurity, maybe it's doubt. God wants to uncover today and chip it away because he's working on you. If you will let him, I'm so glad he's still working on me. He's cutting away. He's putting me on the potter's wheel. He's working on me. Somebody shout, he's working on me. Look at your neighbor and say, looks like you need some work. Now, don't be offended because it's true. We need some work. So today, in the next few moments, I just want to give you some ways that God works on us, all right? Sometimes God works on us and takes us through seasons of preparation. Just as uh, I remember years ago, uh, and when I worked in construction and also we built our home, any uh, foreman or any contractor will have something they called staging. And what that means is they will bring lots of material to the job site and they will stage it. So when they're ready to start the project, then they will start to build the project. So they will stage the lumber and they will, will stage some electrical things. They'll stage most of the stuff that they need because they know eventually they're going to need it. But you don't start building a house with the plumbing. What do you start with? You've got to start with the foundation. 
And some of us, we try to get ahead of God, and God says, some of you are just still at a foundation stage, and that's okay. Enjoy the journey. But the interesting thing is, is God works through us, and God takes us through stages of life, and how God prepares us for what he has for us, and you're not going to like this, but it's true. Sometimes God prepares you through trials, challenges, tribulation, periods of waiting and in that process God is continually to refine us Amen. think of Moses Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness before God called him to go to Egypt 40 years of just learning humility learning to serve never thinking he was going to stand in Egypt again or go back to Egypt but yet for 40 years he was in process he was in transition he was in that growing stage he was in that stage of learning to depend on God some of you right now you may think I can't handle this you're right you can't that's why you need Jesus Amen. so some of you right now be in maybe in a season of preparation and that's okay because no matter what season you're in God's always with you I said he's always with you some of the way God grows us is sometimes God grows us because he puts connections in our path. And sometimes the connections are good, and sometimes they're bad connections. Sometimes there's good people in our life, and sometimes there's people that are not so good in our life. I want to show you how to, to deal with the ones that are not so good, but I want to give you a quick example of a recent experience that I was able to be a part of, of just a good connection that God put in somebody's life. So, you know, Pastor Jeff always tells us we need to be used of God anywhere, any place, any time, and God will order our steps. Well, this week, a young lady went into a grocery store. And she met another lady, and she, the, the other lady noticed her, and she said, well, you seem like a Christian. And, and I don't know all the details, so I'm just going to paraphrase the story. And she said, will you pray for me? The young lady said, absolutely, I'll pray for you. So right there in John Eagle, she begins to call upon the name of the Lord and pray. And the lady she was praying over was broken because they recently lost a loved one in their family. And she said, I don't even have anybody to go to a service and speak do you know anybody? Because my church can't do it. And this young lady called me. She says, Pastor, can you do this? Can you show up? I said, and she told me the story. And I could tell the excitement and joy in her voice because she was so excited. God is using me. Even when I don't see it, I'm so thankful I decided to go to John Eagle instead of Walmart. I'm so thankful that he ordered my steps. And I said, absolutely, I will be there. And I was able to go Friday night. And, and let me just tell you a little bit even more of the story. As I went there Friday night and I met the wonderful family and, and we were able to have this service, uh, the first song they played was Hymn of Heaven. Our worship leader sent out a text on Wednesday before I even knew that I was going to be there Friday night and, and said, this is the song we're going to do, Hymn of Heaven. See how God orders everything? Like, you can't plan this. I just told him back there, I said, do you realize that on Friday night when I stood there, that was the opening song uh, they played for this service, and, and you put this on the worship list and didn't even know that I was going to be as, that's just God working, amen? amen? It feels good to be used of God, right? It really does, amen? And this wonderful family sitting up here today, amen? We just want to thank God for, for being here, amen? Thank you. And that's just one story of how God will order our steps. And we all have stories like that of good connections that God will bring into our life. And sometimes God puts people and he orchestrates and he orchestrates relationships and opportunities. And it's all sometimes to the working things out. But sometimes God can also use people that are not so good. Look at what the words of Jesus in John 15. I, I want to share it with you real quick. John 15 and 18. I want you to go ahead and read this for me, Braden. If the world hates you, what? you know... <laughs> Is this Jesus talking? Are you sure? He said, if the world... What? Hates you. you. You know that what? It hated me before it hated you. Wow, that's some tough words. Hmm. What's Jesus talking about here? Let's go a little bit further. Let me... See if he clears it up for us. Go ahead. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. 
So if you're of the world and you act like the world, you realize that you're just a part of the world, you don't realize you're not in the world to change the world, amen? then the world's going to love you and accept you because the world will love their own. But if you want to be a difference maker, sometimes people are not going to like that. And that's okay. Go ahead. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you Who out of the world. Who chose us? Jesus. See, he plucked you out of the world. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. Understand, you belong to a kingdom when you give your life to Jesus. You belong to the kingdom of God. So you're in this world, not of this world. And I'm so glad he chose me out of this world. He says, when he chose you out of the world and pulled you out of the world, the world will what? Hate you. Wow. Like. Who wants to hear this? Like, who wants to be hated? Like, I can remember when I was a kid, we had a, a nursery rhyme we sang, and somebody, some of you might have sang this, and it's actually a little bit disturbing, but we would have pity parties for ourselves, and we would say, Nobody loves me, everybody hates me, I think I'll just eat worms. Big, fat, juicy one, easy, wheezy, squeezy one. See how they wiggle and squirm. Oh, it gets worse. It gets a lot worse. Listen to verse two. I'll bite their heads off, suck out the juice, and throw their skin away. Nobody knows how fat I'll grow on worms three times a day. Isn't that awful? I used to sing that when I was a kid. No wonder I'm messed up. That explains a lot. Thank you for being here in this therapy session. I never did bite the head of a worm off and suck the juice out, but I might have sang that song a little few times anyway. If you don't believe it, Google it. It's an actually, it's a nursery rhyme. Has anybody ever heard that before? All right. The older ones, the younger ones wisened up and threw that song away. But anyway, Google it. It's still out there. Anyway, let's try to get back to what Jesus was saying, all right? You don't want to hear about me eating worms. So, All right, let's go to verse number 20. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute so you. So if they criticize and persecute Jesus, which they did, they're also going to persecute you. Go ahead. And if they kept my word, they will keep yours also. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. Watch this. He's going to start to clear this up real quick. Go ahead. Verse 21. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. Watch this. If you are persecuted and ridiculed by someone, it's because they don't know God the way that you do. They're not the enemy. It's the enemy working in them and through them. Just this week, I was talking to somebody, and they said, Pastor, there's something going on in my family. And she said, there's this person in my family that's just causing all kind of havoc. And they said, I don't even know if I should say this, but I hate this person. And I said, hate's a strong word to use, and I wouldn't recommend using that. I said, let me ask you this question. I said, if that person surrendered their life to Jesus and changed their ways, would you welcome back into your family? She said, absolutely. I said, then that tells me you don't hate them. You just hate the actions that they're doing. Right. Right. And she said, I spent some time with them recently, and I was so irritated. I just wanted to give them a piece of my mind. If you knew this person, they would be very good at doing that. And she said, as I was there, and I, I, I felt this anger and this hatred, all of a sudden she said, peace of God come over me, and the Lord spoke into my heart. And they said, see that person? I died for them too. That's why Jesus said we need to pray for our enemies. The enemy will come at us, but understand that, that sometimes it's not that they hate you. It's just that the fact that they, they don't know Jesus. And if the enemy, it's the enemy in them that hates the Savior in me. I want you to hear that. It's the enemy in them that hates the Savior in me. That's why we don't love the world. That's why real love is found in the church. And I want to tell you this. Anytime you try to do anything for the kingdom of God, you will have a battle. Amen. If the enemy's not bad on you, he's not afraid of you. Amen. If you want to be invisible in the kingdom, he will let you alone. 
But if you want to do something for God, he will attack you. Amen. And you have to get the proper perspective of people. It's understanding. It's not them. It's the evil that's in them that needs to be experienced to the Savior that's in me. So that's what Jesus was saying. He said, what did he say here at the end of this verse? Look at what he said here. What did he say? He said, because they do not know him. It's because they do not know Jesus. Amen. And it's tough for people like me that consider themselves a people person to realize that there are people out there that do not like me. I find that very difficult to wrap my mind around. And I realize that there's nothing wrong with me. There's probably just something wrong with them because... You know, I'm a lovable, fun guy, right? But then I realized we all have Goliaths. We all have Job's comforters. We all have people in our life. And I'll ask you this. When's the last time that you actually got on your knees and prayed for somebody? It's easy to pray for people that I love. It's so easy to do that. I mean, I can intercede for my family. I can intercede for my church family. What about somebody that, I'll be honest, I don't care for them. I don't want to be around them. When's the last time you get on your knees and learn to pray for somebody like that? See, we have to learn the ability to block things out. And what do I mean by block things out? Understand that you are going to be hurt by people, but hurt people hurt people. Understand that. And, and, if I can draw a parallel, I think one of the, some of the greatest people at learning to block things out are professional athletes because they've learned how to just block things out because they could be playing at home and everybody loves them, but they go to a visiting stadium, they are hollered at, they're told they're no good, they talk about their family, they tell them they stink, they suck, they say all these terrible things about them, but yet what they, you know what they do? They just learn to block it out and keep playing the game. And that's what we have to learn in this walk with God is we have to learn to block it out and keep playing the game. Yeah, Amen. Yes, I did say the S word. For those who were like, oh, I see someone saying he said it. Some of your languages are a lot worse than that. Anyway. That's the beauty of having uh, editing things. Heath can just edit that out. You know, if you're here and you heard that, you don't even have to worry about it. You know, you won't hear it online. Anyway, we're a real church for real people, right? Amen. Amen. But we have to learn how to just block it out. Somebody say block it out. Let's learn how to just block it out. And you keep doing what you're doing. You keep working for the Lord. You keep running your race. And let them talk. Because guess what? If you do nothing or be nothing for the kingdom of God, the enemy will let you alone. But the moment you try to accomplish something, whether it's personal or even in the spiritual realm or in the kingdom, guess what? People will attack you. Amen. But look what Jesus said. Are you ready for some hard truth? All right, I love that Jesus connects the dots for us. Watch this, hard truth, John 16 and 33. It says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace in this world. You will have what? What am I going to have? That doesn't sound like fun. But he said we can have tribulation, but we should be of what? Be of good cheer. Why should we be of good cheer? Because why? He said he has overcome the world. Amen. It's amazing how God connects us. And when you know that Jesus is right there by your side, you know that you can overcome anything. And the Bible promises us that he's going to be with us. And sometimes we just got to let God get us to the next point. Our job is just to go from point A to point B, point B to point C. I want to show you a little story real quick. Just give me a few more minutes, all right? Are you with me? Are you, are you getting anything? All right, good. All right. Some of you are still stuck on the worm song. Like, I should have saved that to the end. Some of you are thinking, I want to hear this awful song. Anyway, let's go, uh, let's go to the next uh, portion of Scripture in Luke. So I want to share this little story real quick. Go ahead and read it, Brad. Now it happened on a certain day 
that he got into a boat with his disciples. So here's Jesus hanging out with his disciples, and it says he got into a boat with them. And watch what Jesus said. And Jesus said to them what? Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. So Jesus said, listen, this is what we're doing. Everybody get in the boat. That's point one, step one. He said, once we get in the boat, Jesus told them where they were going. He said, we are launching out and going to the other side. Right there, they got a, a direct command of Jesus, from Jesus, of where they were going. All right? So he says, here's point one. All right? I'm going to get you to point two. We're going to the other side. But sometimes, let me just show you this, sometimes between point one and point two, that's when the storm happens. Sometimes that's when the trials happen. Sometimes that's when the tribulation comes. And we got to hold on to the fact that he said he was getting us there. And no matter how he has to get us there, if he has to knock down walls, he will knock down walls. If he has to take us through a, a sea, he will take us through the sea. If he has to knock down a giant for us, he will do that. When he tells you he's going to take you somewhere, he will get you there. But watch what happened in this time of transition when the dots are being connected from dot one to dot two. Watch what happens. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm uh, How came. many's ever felt like that God wasn't really paying attention to them? Like, how many's ever say, Lord, did you wake up? Are you, are you sleeping? Are you, you, know, like, you know, God doesn't sleep, right? This is God's son, God in the flesh. Here's Jesus snoozing. You know why Jesus was resting? Because he already knew they were getting to the other side. He told them where they were going. So here's Jesus just, and all of a sudden, they're in the middle of the storm, and it says, a windstorm came down on the lake. And what was happening? And they were filling with water and with, were in jeopardy. They were in jeopardy, like not the game you play. Like this is life and death. And here we are ready to die. It's a storm. How is Jesus sleeping in a storm? How is he having peace in the storm? The boat is rocking. The water, we're taking on water. But Jesus is just sleeping. Little day realized that they had the answer with them all the time. He already told them where they were going. But he didn't tell them how they were going to get there, how long it was going to take, or what storms they would go through. He just said, we're getting to the other side. But what's so good about this is, is they could have just stayed in the boat, let Jesus sleep, and made it to the other side. But in the middle of their stress, they decided that they thought they were in jeopardy. So they decided, like we do a lot of times, let's take things into our own hands and watch what they did watch what they did there we go. <laughs> and they came to him and awoke to him saying master master we are perishing they said jesus wake up we're dying here i mean there's water like you, you know you have to be wet you have to be soaked here we are dying would you wake up how many's ever felt like that in the middle of a storm? We don't act like it. Nobody else sees us. We're like, Jesus, are you here? And they said, Jesus, wake up. And look what Jesus did. Then he arose. Now, it would have been easy for Jesus to say, let me alone. We're going to the other side. But Jesus said, I need to step in here and calm their fears. Watch what he did. Then he arose and rebuked the wind he and the raging of the water. He rebuked the wind and the raging sea of water. And guess what happened? And they ceased and there was calm. There was calm and peace. And that's the beautiful thing about God because sometimes the storm's there to teach you things. And sometimes if the storm even gets too rough, you can tell him this is too much. He can calm the storm and give you peace. In other words, this is what's trying to happen. This is what God's really trying to do sometimes. He's trying to teach you lessons to grow you and to stretch you. And sometimes we have to realize, are we going to learn the lesson? Or are we just going to keep repeating and repeating? See, sometimes we focus on the circumstance. We let it get it down, get us down. But sometimes we need to look through the circumstance to the victory that's right on the other side of it. Come on. I said, we need to look through the circumstance. Yes. See, the disciples were looking at the storm instead of looking through the storm. Yes. Knowing that just on the, just on the other side of this storm, there's calm waters. And Jesus said, I'm going to take what's on the other side and bring it to this side to bring you peace. Because mm -hmm. the reality is, is God is all powerful, all knowing, all loving. And Jesus said, you're going to have troubles. You're going to have trials. 
But I love that verse because it says, But be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. I have an overcomer dwelling in me, and that's Jesus. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And as long as we exist here in time, God will work on us. Scripture says that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We have to just learn to trust God. We have to learn and remember he has a plan. So how do I stay in this when God is preparing me and working on me and I have good connections and bad connections? I'm having trials and tribulations. How do I get through it all? Do you want the answer? Here's the answer. The, James put one of the best answers. He said we need to draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You want the storm calm? Get close to the storm calmer. I said you want to make it up the mountain? Get close to the one who created it. You want to make it through the valley? Get close to the one who created it. Amen. When you draw near to God, the Bible says God will draw near to you. You've got to have the right perspective. You have to have the right ability. You've got to see it because God sees the big picture. And sometimes we don't. We have to just trust his timing, trust the process, and trust he's taking us from dot one to dot two. You know, when I was a kid... Going back to childhood. I'm not singing another terrible song, so don't worry, all right? I'm going to give you one of those once in a while. We used to have this thing, and I I think they still do that, but did anybody ever have a paper called Connect the Dots? Some of you. Have you guys ever did Connect the Dots in school? Okay, they're still doing that, all right? So I have this paper here called Connect the Dots, and... And what's neat with Connect the Dots is, is you start at dot 50, right? Why? Oh, don't get ahead of yourself, see? So you start where? One, okay. So let's do this. Just give me a few minutes just to entertain yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Man, that's a long one, okay. All right, I'll finish it later. I lost interest. But here's what happens when you have the connect the dots. So this one you can kind of see. But when you get to connect the dots, you have to learn to connect dot one to dot two, dot two to dot three, dot three to dot four. You know, you just keep going. And what happens is you don't really see the big picture of what it is. Unless you get something simple like I have. You can kind of see what it is. But a lot of times you just see a lot of dots. And what happens is you got to go from dot one to two to three. And as you connect the dots and keep connecting the dots, eventually you will see the big picture. And this is what I want you to understand. God already has a God eye view of you from heaven. And he already sees the big picture of your life. And your job is just to go from dot one to dot two. Now, in the middle between dot two and dot three, you might have some situations to deal with. But understand that he is with you because he's with you with dot one and dot two. He's going to be with you in dot two and dot three. And as you continue to let God be with you, you will continue to walk out this faith journey. And you just keep connecting the dot, connecting the dot, connecting the dot. My job is just go to the next step. The Bible says our steps are already ordered by God, because he sees a zoomed out, bigger picture. We know that Romans 8, 23 says, all things work together for the good to those who love God, because he sees the big picture. So as you stand to your feet in this place, when you leave, the ushers have a little homework assignment for you today, and they're going to give it to you as you leave, and I want you to take it home, and I want you to sit down and just begin to connect the dots. Remember, start at 1, don't start at 50, start at 1, and just begin to connect the dots, because this will drive the point home that, guess what? God is with me through the whole process. He's working on me, and He's working in me and through me, and He sees the bigger picture. He sees it. My job is just to trust him. And I want to just pray for you right now in this place. And then we can have our prayer team members come and get ready. 
If you need anointed special prayer, they're going to do that for you here in a moment. But I want to just pray for you. Because some of us, we feel like we're in the storm and we're like, God, where are you? I know you're here. I know you're with me. But you're being silent. And God says, you know why I'm silent? Because the teacher never talks during a test. Ooh, somebody need to hear that. Because I'm trying to teach you something. And just keep moving. Because sometimes from dot 54 to dot 55, it's a season of joy and peace. But then I get to the next dot 55 to 56, and I'm going through all kind of trials and tribulation. But God's growing me and stretching me and working on me. It's just trusting in him. And taking a blessed assurance and knowing that he sees the big picture. And I trust, God, that you're going to get me to where I need to be. And I want to speak to some of you right now that you may be in a, a season of, of a storm. You may be in a season of a battle. And Jesus said, today, if you would just ask, I'm just going to give you some peace. I'm going to rise up and step into this situation and speak peace. Be still. And he'll bring that peace to you right now. As we bow our heads in this place, Father, we just pray over this body of believers. Help us in taking a blessed assurance, knowing that you're connecting dots. That you never have left us. You've never forsaken us. You've been a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You are ordering each and every one of our steps. And whether you put people in our life for good or people in our life for bad, all of it is to teach us and to grow us, God, because you have a zoomed out view. And I'm glad that you're, because even when I don't see it, I know you're working. Even when I don't understand why I'm going through this, I know you're working. And Lord, you have a plan and a purpose. I'm going to trust your timing. I'm going to trust your process. And I'm going to trust that you are connecting every thought. We receive it from you in this place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.